Look at his strength. He's a 150, 800 meter guy. Great acceleration. It's going to be down to the final sprint. Well, Suleiman gritted his teeth there. He looks like he's in a little bit of pain, but I think he still has another gear. Walid Suleiman holds him off. Walid Suleiman ends up first for Ole Miss. As Walid's time is winding down here at Ole Miss, it's been really good to uh, just be able to watch him grow, watch him develop over four years here in our program. Walid Suleiman ends up first for Ole Miss. You know, for a guy like him to be able to leave our program now, have a chance to run um, as a professional, you know, makes me really proud as his coach. I first met Walid when I came first to campus in 2018, summer 2018. And I mean, from the beginning, like you realize how good this guy was. Like, I was working out with him, and I just saw the talent and like the hard work he puts in. From the beginning, like he was an example for me and just for the rest of the team. Like he was only a sophomore, and he was the leader of the team. You know, I'm glad I got 336, but I was hoping for that 35. That's how you lead a team, baby. <laughs> you know, Walid has been a, an incredible teammate in his time here at Ole Miss. You know, he is really the type of guy who he elevates not only his own game, but everyone around him as well. Whether it's through training, you know, off the track, uh, you know, anything that he's a part of, he's going to force people to raise their standards up to where he's at. Walid Suleiman now approaches the finish line of his collegiate career, but the goal of establishing a legacy of his own among a rising program had always been there from the start. Probably look, one of the main reasons that I assumed that I came to Ole Miss is wanted to be remembered as like one of those that started the program. Um, because like you could always like go into a good program, blah, 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 be really good. And you're just, okay, you're just another person that came here. Um, I didn't want to be that. You know, when he came in as a freshman, we had, you know, some really high level guys that were just finished or just graduating out after his first year. And so, you know, to watch him follow in their footsteps and blaze his own path here, um, it's just been really fun to watch. For the 2018 SEC Men's Cross Country Championship Trophy, presented to the Ole Miss Rebels. What the hell is up, dude? That's what we came here for. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> That's what we're talking about when we said we're going to build this program and some people are going to remember it. That's what I liked is that Ole Miss was still like not that big of a team yet in a distance wise and then for us to like come back and win SECs for the first time ever back to back to like have multiple like all Americans in one race to like scoring as like many points as we could possibly do it like the indoor meet we you know got second in the eight won the mile won the 3k won the 5k won the DMR this past indoor season you know that's something that like we've been wanting to do for a while and you know to be part of that it was just magical in a way. You know, he's absolutely the kind of person that you'd want to have as a part of your team and someone who, obviously from a performance standpoint, someone that, you know, we rely on heavily that you can always count on, but he brings a lot more to the track than just his race performances. I don't know how to speak English neither, does he? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's called the Air Manahan. Yep. It's quite good. It's That's comfy. Awesome. More fun. Gee, we're not allowed to look at the camera. No. No. Uh, that young man, an incredible story, really kind of the, the, the middle piece as Coach Vinoy has built this team, and he's the bridge between the future and the past guys that set the table here. You know, coming in, he had a lot of success early on in terms of running fast times, but we would have a little bit of an issue when we got to some of the bigger meets, the championship type NCAA meets, you know, wouldn't quite perform as well uh, as he was hoping going in. And I think he kind of shouldered that pretty heavily. You know, he felt like people, you know, people label me as a guy, I can't run the championship meet, I can't do it on the biggest stage. And I think, you know, that wore on him a little bit. Walid Suleiman there on the right side of your screen is the one to watch in this one. Heading into outdoor season um, to regionals, I was ranked second right behind Robert when he ran his uh, 336. And I believe he was like ranked eighth in uh, NCAA history in the 15. When I was right behind him with 339 and I didn't make it to nationals. When I was ranked second, you know, the stocks were high and like everybody was expecting me to make it and um, kind of just like fumbled the bag. <laughs> and, um, you know, from there, it kind of like just sat on my mind is like, do I want to like settle for that? You know, I was kind of like relaxed in my mind. I was like, oh, I'll make it. It's all good. Like, don't worry about it. We'll be good. And then I didn't make it. And it was like a shock to me. And I was like, you know, like, that can't happen anymore. 
Following the missed shot his freshman season, a refocused Solomon turned the corner from running in the middle of the pack to sitting atop the podium. Coming off COVID, you know, we had a meeting at the beginning of the season back in August where we just talked about, you know, your goals for the year. And he just said, you know, I want to be someone that I can perform on the biggest stage. When I get to the NCAA final, I can run the best that I've run all season and be happy with how I perform instead of leaving the meet, you know, discouraged about um, not doing as well as I had hoped. You know, freshman year happened, okay, cool, like I'll get it next year. You know, sophomore year happened, all right, cool, I got like better plays, blah, 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 but like, you know, made it to nationals individually, but I still made the same mistake. You know, junior year comes in, it's like, all right, cool, like, you know, I can do it this year, you know, and I'll be fine. I'll just set myself as like the dark horse this year and then come in senior year and actually like start winning everything. And then just junior year was basically just like robbed from us. And it was like, okay, cool, like, you can't say next year now because this is my last year in a way. <laughs> and like, it was kind of like in my mind, and I had to sit down with Van Hoen and talk to him, and be like, hey, listen, like, I, I can't mess up again. Like, make sure that I don't do that because like, if this happens, I don't have a next year and I can't afford doing that because, you know, I want to be on the wall somewhere around here at some point in my life, you know, and he helped me with that. They've raced twice outside of yes yesterday's competition. They've raced twice while Lee Suleiman has come up big twice. They're We're done. Time for nationals now. You know, to his credit, he really put the work in this year, um, not only physically, but I think mentally, just being on top of his game, being prepared. When we did get to the big meets from a mental aspect to really show up and perform. And I think, you know, being top three in an individual event, uh, both indoor nationals and outdoor nationals, you know, really showed that, you know, he had finally figured out the way for him to be ready uh, mentally, not only mentally, but physically to be ready to compete at the biggest stage. And so I think for him, that was the big turning point this year. But Suleiman shifts again, and he will win it, and he will set a meet record as they both go under four minutes. You know, going through indoors, ready said what happened as he sees, job done. Going to nationals, boom, third, first time. And you know, I told myself, you know, gotta get top three in order to win. And that's what I needed to do my junior year. And I did it in my senior year, so now I'm like, okay, like, now that's what I gotta do this outdoor season. Tomorrow, another one. <laughs> I'll tell you, Waleed Suleiman just continues to rack up the titles. Indoor SEC champion, then he goes on to the, the on to a third place finish at the NCAA championships indoors in the mile, but he's such a versatile guy. We're gonna see him come back tomorrow and qualify in that 1500 as well. Solomon would not be alone in the rise through the rankings. Alongside his training partner and best friend, Mario Garcia Romo, the pair helped pace each other across the unique schedule of the post-COVID seasons. You know, Waleed and Mario have worked exceptionally well together all year. It's been fun to watch them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. They really complement each other really well. They train together super well, and they're just also two guys that, you know, they're brothers. And I remember, you know, like watching Craig and Robert and, and Son and all these guys uh, that were racing together, and it was so cool just to see, like, two teammates just taking over the field and making their race, you know, like, it's. Like, it's in some ways, like if you are taking control over the race and like you are doing something that you want to do with your team. And there you see, he was, I, I understand now, he was looking around, he was looking for his teammate and they wanted to hitch up and run together and it's very common here in the mile to get with your teammate, get a little help and work together. Stride for stride, the dynamic duo led the team across all seasons, most notably sweeping the top three spots at the SEC Cross Country Championships. And Romo pushes to the front. To be honest, I didn't realize we were going one, two, three until we crossed the finish line. Because, uh, I mean, Wally was in front of me with like 400 meters to go. It is going to be one, two, three. Look at the excitement of Suleiman. They may not have the team title, but it is Ole Miss, Ole Miss, Ole Miss. One, two, three. Romo, Bullock, Suleiman. A statement from the top from Ole Miss. I promised Cole and Mario before the race, I was like, listen, like, I'm gonna do my absolute best to, like, to not let anybody else beat me but you two guys. I don't care if you guys go one, two, and I finish third, but all that I gotta know is that we can't, I'm just not gonna let anybody be like in, in front of me. That's not my teammates. You might normally find someone in that position be upset that they didn't win the individual championship. I think uh, really shows how big of a team guy he was to you know talk to him after the race and he didn't care if someone beat him as long as it was someone from his own team. And so to see him not be super concerned about, well, I didn't win the SEC championship individually. I think he was really happy 
uh, that Mario won, but also just kind of happy to experience that moment where they were able to cross the line together as three teammates. Well, I think Wally is the leader of the team. There's no doubt in there. Uh, he's been like certain as the sample of like how to be a, a good athlete, how to be a good teammate, how to be a good person. And he's been the, the guy I've been looking up to during all th these three years at Ole Watching those guys from the beginning of the year to finishing the season in Eugene, both in the 1500 final, both finishing top five, you know, every practice, every workout, I mean, those guys literally ran every step of the season the whole year together. And so it was really cool to kind of watch their journey. You know, they went through the conference meet together, they got to the regional meet, advanced through those rounds together. There's that rivalry that is really healthy because I, I feel like working out together is just like, you're working out with a guy who is one of the best in the NCAA, one of the best in the world. So it's an example to follow. We can like have a perspective of the course and do good you know, in eight weeks. Hmm. So uh, now, going for the win in eight weeks? Yeah. Yes, sir. There's, there's always that one teammate that you're gonna have that you're just gonna be like, man, like that was a lot of fun. Like, I wish I could train with him again. There are no more training reps in the red and blue of Ole Miss as Solomon departs the collegiate ranks in the pursuit of a professional career. When I was talking to him through his recruiting process, but also just over the years here, you know, he's always had a really uh, strong desire, a, a goal to, I wanna be a professional runner. And so, you know, it's just really cool to be kind of by his side as you watch his dream come true. Um, it just makes you really proud to be um, his coach, but just affiliated with someone of such strong character and just to watch someone have their life dream come true has been really special. There's a lot of ways I'd like to be remembered as if just, you know, one of those guys that like decided to come to this program to elevate it. You know, it will keep continuing as well. Like this is not the end. I'm pretty sure like Within like the next 10 years, I'm pretty sure Ole Miss is going to be way, way up. And then at that point, I'm probably going to like wish that I was like 10 years younger so I can be in that group. <laughs>